Hi, it's Graham from the Gorilla Store. Today we're going to do an instructional video. In November last year, 2021, we did a number of classes on lamp making. Lamp making is a very, in many ways, a very easy thing to do. The skills required are very low. The tools required are very few. The materials you need are kind of up to you. Uh, but it's something that you can do on a weekend and make something new for your house, for your apartment, for your office. It's a really easy little design challenge uh, that brings new life and light to where you're working. So our classes, we gave you a cord and a light socket. It's all you need to make a lamp. You just need to connect these two, put a bulb in, it's a lamp, but it looks ugly. So you need to put stuff in between to make it look like something. You don't want to just have a yeah, dangling piece of wire and a bulb. It's a little, I mean, unless you're going for a very noir or, you know, seedy environment, then sure. Um, this is one that I'm finishing off. I made two of these, or I have one complete and this is the second. This is a split piston. So in its normal operation, there would be its partner on the other side and in between there would be a linkage arm to the crankshaft. And these would be bolted together and they would be a compression cylinder for an internal combustion engine of, of some type. I don't know what type of engine it came from. It really doesn't matter. I like how it looks. So when I designed this lamp, oh, and the uh, wood is a nice piece of just recovered pine. Um, and a couple of bolts for feet. You just drill a hole, screw them in. Uh, the pieces on top here are because there was a split that ran across the board, so it's both holding these together um, and just gives it that, it, it lengthens the overall look of the lamp. With this lamp, the bulb is going to sit right back here and it will give you kind of a spotlight effect this way, but if you put this against a wall, you'll get a nice glow and ambient light. So it's not something that's, it's, it's more of a, you know, you could point it at something you like across the room and light it up, as well as get some ambient light behind you. So what we need to do is assemble these parts. We have the socket, we have the cord, I have an extension here that will go below the piece of wood and keep on the floor and, and hold all the parts together. Um, I've got to check that one for length. That might be too long, in which case I'm just going to pause the video and go grab another one. Uh, but it will sit right here, like that. Bulb goes on top. This cord has a switch. These are also recycled cords. I didn't buy this. The socket I bought at uh, a hardware store. Everything else I found. So total cost of this project without the bulb is about $6. So... Find things around your house. Okay, I'm going to pause. I'm going to get that piece and check it for length. Okay, so I got a new threaded end. This is actually just a little bit too short. So the first one that we had is, is the right length. Um, I should mention the cord. You can get three wire cords. So it has the two wires on the outside that provide power. And this green one in the middle is a safety ground. If I had been building this out of mostly metal, or if the wires were in contact with metal, I would use a three wire light or a three wire cord. In this case, it's touching wood. Wood is the only thing nearby. If you touch the metal parts, there's no electricity running anywhere really near it. So it's fine, it doesn't matter. I've stripped the wires already. You can use a pair of pliers, a knife, uh, a wire stripper. The important thing when you're putting your lamp together is to get the parts in the right order. It's really easy to go, okay, I put the wire through, I screw this on, and oh, I didn't put the, didn't put the nut on. So I have the nut and the post. I'm gonna slide the wire through these first. It's gonna be a little, little snug, and I'm gonna give myself lots of room. I don't need this until the very end. This part, I know I wanna go here, so I'm gonna pass the wire through the base of my lamp here. 
and then I have my socket. On the socket itself, getting closer, there are, uh, there's a silvery one and there's a brass one. If we were using DC electricity, it would matter which one I screwed which wire to. We're using AC, which comes out of your wall, and it doesn't matter. So I'm just gonna pass these wires through this hole here. I have a screwdriver. We're going to be using the uh, inferior Phillips screwdriver type because that's what the socket came with. I'm gonna loosen those two screws off. One is in a slightly more awkward position than the other. We pass the wires through. We press one down underneath the silver. This is where a slightly smaller screwdriver or a flathead screwdriver would probably be useful. I don't, I do have a smaller one. So we're just gonna make sure that this wire wants to go underneath this screw. And this is a fiddly bit. This is something that takes holding your tongue the right way, a little bit of concentration, and we're gonna make sure all of those wires want to stay underneath. We don't want them sticking out so far that they could reach over and touch the other side. That would cause a short, get little sparks, a little bit of smoke, a little bit of excitement for the day, raise your heart rate. Don't really want that. I'm gonna go with Dave Picciuto on this and say that we just, you know, we're just having fun. Don't need the excitement. That's the uh, wood, no, that's not the wood wizard. He's make something, woodworking channel. You also want to make sure you're turning the screw the right way. That would really help with your project. There we go. Now again, because this is going to be in contact with wood, and wood is not a conductor, as long as you don't splash your favorite beverage across the top, we're not going to have any problems with sparks or arcs or tripping your breaker. Now this screw is right underneath this little bridge here, and I can't get my screwdriver in. So we're just going to have to kind of like work at it at an angle, and we're using the even more inferior slotted flathead screwdriver on this in this case only because it fits kind of uh, maybe able to slide this in the side here to get into the screw it is going to fight me at every turn no pun intended So I'm going to pause, I'm going to fight with this, and then we'll come back and we'll talk about the rest of it. Okay, I've got it screwed in. It was a little bit of a fight. It was just a lot of things happening in a very small space. So now, turn this around again. Our socket, I've cut a recess around this hole so the hole is large enough for the wire to pass through and also to accommodate this little metal bracket, but not to go all the way through. So it will sit just like that, nice and flush with the surface of the wood. And then my little threaded tube here will come up the back. I can take this knot off. We're gonna screw this into the base of the light socket. We're gonna wait until it gets a little bit snug because that's pushing up against the wires and holding them further against their contacts. And then we'll take the nut and screw it down. So that way, 
socket's not going to go anywhere. So this is what a semi-finished lamp looks like. I have an LED bulb. We're using LED because they last longer. You can get them in a bunch of different colors and color tones. Uh, and they're energy efficient. They're much better than getting an incandescent. Incandescents do have their place. They do look nice, but they consume an awful lot of power. And it doesn't seem like a lot until you start paying for your own electricity. And then I've got an extension cord here plugged in over. So let's, uh, let's check it out. Oh, there we go. Lit up. Switch works. So this is a finished lamp. So this is the effect that we're going for, where if it's against a wall, you'll get a nice spray of light, and out front, you'll get this kind of spotlight effect. So this, this is, you know, an hour or two's work. You have a lamp. This lamp and its partner will be available for sale in the Gorilla Store. I'm not going to risk shipping these, so you'll have to come to Toronto if you'd like to buy one. I have some other lamps that uh, I've built with things from around. In fact, I'll go get one. This is the lamp that I made from an old blowtorch. So you'll see a lot of lamp, blowtorch lamps online that the light comes out the top, but of course the flame came out the front on these. So this is about 1920s, so it's about 100 years old now. So is the piece of oak that it's on. Again, these are all recovered materials, except for the light socket, and the light bulb, and the little switch down here. So. There you go. So if you're interested in making a lamp, and you need some parts, come down and see us. If you want to make a lamp of your own, show us what you've made. You know, hit us up on our Instagram and Twitter account, show us pictures of lamps you've made, have a look around, find things, harvest old electronics for their power cords. If you're throwing out, you know, if you're recycling some piece of electronics that doesn't work, keep the cord, could be useful. All right, thanks again, we'll see you later.